An inquiry into why thousands of people were given blood that was infected with HIV and hepatitis back in the 70s and 80s it continues in Leeds today. The inquiry is hearing evidence from victims and their families and it's also investigating a potential cover-up at the highest level. Well, our health correspondent Paul Kelso is at the inquiry in Leeds. Uh, Paul, what have we heard today? Yes, we've been. This inquiry has now been uh, running for uh, close to two months, with hearings in London, uh, Belfast, and now in Leeds over the last fortnight. And we've become sadly used to hearing really devastating evidence of the personal cost and price paid by those infected uh, by infected blood products or blood transfusions in the 1970s and 1980s. One of the f facts that has come to the surface is that. Every four days, somebody who is infected dies, meaning many will not see uh, justice out of this process or what they hope will be justice. What we hadn't heard until today was from one of those people, and we've heard remarkable evidence from a man called Peter Burney, who lives in Manchester, who was infected with hepatitis C via a blood transfusion 40 years ago. On Monday this week, he was told that cancer of the liver that he has developed as a result is terminal. And he told the inquiry that while he may not live to see the end of this process, he's determined it should deliver justice. This is what he said. I am one of the many who won't see justice. And at this stage, you won't even know my name. But when I'm done, you will remember it well. Because the difference with me is I will not pass quietly. I will scream from the rooftops and document every part of my passing and show you for what a bunch of lying, murdering criminals who have stood by and watched a victim die every 96 hours without any kind of remorse and knowing many of these victims are dying in poverty, leaving thousands of affected families in poverty and having to rely on the means-tested handouts from the very people who covered up this mass murder, the Department of Health. You really are not fit to be called human beings. It's hugely powerful evidence, and like every witness so far, those in the room who heard it rose to applaud Mr Burney at the end of it, but the real power of that evidence beyond the incredible bravery it must have taken to address the inquiry in those terms, not four days after being told that he has perhaps only a year to live, uh, was in his criticism of the financial support schemes that are in place for those who, like him, have hepatitis C or HIV. He described them as wholly inadequate, as demeaning, and his real fear, he's uh, told us, we've spoken to him in another interview after that witness uh, evidence he gave, he's told us his real fear is that his wife and family will have to live in poverty because these schemes are inadequate. So a very powerful message that will go via the chairman of the inquiry and I'm sure be heard in Whitehall. He also added, we should say, that there was a 40-day delay in the processing of his, the scans on his liver that gave him that diagnosis. He believes that delay denied him his last chance of any treatment of a transplant or of any meaningful treatment. So very powerful evidence. There will be more of it as the day goes on. The inquiry is currently hearing from three generations of the same family talking about the passing of their son, father, husband, uh, from a similar transfusion case. So the inquiry has uh, plenty more very difficult evidence to present as the day goes on. All right. Thanks, Paul.